Thank you, Joey. And as investigators work to put together the pieces of the puzzle surrounding Tuesday's violence, they're finding a number of links between the suspected hijackers. CNN's Brent Sadler has more on the background of one man believed to have died when a plane he upped hijack crashed into a Pennsylvania field. A possible White House suicide pilot or the face of an innocent passenger, 26-year-old Ziad Jarrah from Lebanon. The United States Justice Department says he was one of the hijackers on United Flight 93, which crashed in a field some 80 miles from Pittsburgh shortly after three other jets struck the World Trade Center and the Pentagon. Flight 93, whose passengers might have wrestled the hijackers, causing the plane to crash, could have been targeting the very heart of America and President Bush himself. In Lebanon's Bekar Valley, though, Zia Jarrah's family insists there's no hard evidence to prove any of that. He never uh, acted or talked in a way that uh, you, you, you could have uh, an understanding that he, he might be related to this. In Germany, investigators now say the Technical University in Hamburg, with its now closed prayer room, is where Jarrah and two other alleged hijackers studied. Mohammed Atta, whom U.S. authorities believe was aboard the first plane to hit the World Trade Center, and Marwan al-Shihi flying in the second aircraft to hit the Twin Towers. Zia Jarrah's family are Sunni Muslims, well-educated and well-to-do. They spoke of a young man whose personality, they claim, does not fit the profile of an Islamic fundamentalist bent on terror. He has his girlfriend. He go to nightclubs, he drinks sometimes. His way of life can't be related to these parts. Zia Jarrah's way of life away from home started in Germany. He began to study engineering four years ago on courses paid for by proud parents. Around a year ago, he told them he was in the United States taking part in a Boeing Aircraft Corporation seminar related to his studies. After that, he returned to Hamburg, receiving more help from his parents to study. When he later told them he was in Florida training as a pilot, they assumed all was well. His last call home came two days before the suicide attacks, when he thanked his ailing father for sending more money. His apartment manager says he paid cash weekly for one-bedroom accommodation and presented a German passport with a student visa. On May 2nd this year, he obtained a Florida driver's license. The same day, another terrorist suspect, Mohammed Atta, got his Florida driver's license. The only time he raised concern, they say, is when his Turkish girlfriend told them she thought he might have gone with friends to Afghanistan while they were separated for several weeks. The family says there's no proof of any trip to Afghanistan and are willing to cooperate with the international inquiry. What happened is a tragedy, a catastrophe for all people, and we don't agree on these acts, and we, uh, we, we are surprised and uh, shocked of what happened. The Lebanese authorities are stressing that neither the government nor its people at large have any link with the terror attacks against America, regardless of suspicions focused on one of its citizens. Standing ready, say officials here, to cooperate with investigations in any way they can. Brent Sadler, CNN, Beirut.